Welcome back to the garage and welcome to the ultimate 690 SMCR build. In the last episode, in episode one, I sort of introduced the bike, went through some of the bits I had. We started stripping it, basically got all the clothes off it. In this episode, what we're going to do is fit this, which is the Rottweiler intake system. So we're going to fit the Rottweiler intake, take out all of the standard airbox, um, show you some of the other bits and pieces I've got for the bike now. Maybe start fitting the Power Commander. It depends how long this episode is going to take, but this really is going to be getting rid of that airbox, putting the new Rottweiler induction kit on, and me showing off the other bling and plans I've got for this machine. Chopsy, roll that intro. So there's a bit of an elephant in the room, and I'm not talking about me this time. I'm talking about the Hypermotard restoration series. Everyone's asking me, Chops, where's the Hyper? Hang on a minute, Chops, haven't you got another build series to finish yet? Comment after comment about the Hypermotard. I'm still missing the cylinders. When the cylinders are here, well, I've been told the cylinders are going to be coming very soon. So as soon as we've finished with the SMCR, we're going to move straight on to the Hypermotard build. But I just don't have the bits to progress that build any further at the moment. And I just don't want to sit around twiddling my thumbs when I've got this little project I could be getting on with. So that's where the Hypermotard is at. It will be coming back straight after this one. And if there's any news during the SMCR build, I'll let you know what's going on with bits and pieces for the Hyper as well. So please don't say in the comments, Chops, where's the Hyper, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to explode if someone else says that. So without further ado, and in the normal fashion, let me just show you some of the new bits I've got for the project. By the way, do you like my T-shirt? Team Cobra Kai. So lots of questions last time about what exhaust I'm going to be using, blah, blah, blah. Well, I've actually gone for the Arrow titanium system to put on this box. This is all titanium with a carbon tip and we're going to be going for the Tecmo titanium header. So I'm hoping to shed a bit of weight from the exhaust as part of this project. And I'll also, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll weigh everything. When we go into the exhaust, I'll weigh everything. We'll do some comparisons, weight comparisons with the standard system and the Arrow titanium can with the Tecmo titanium headers. Also, we're not just addressing power on this build. We've also got the awesome MotoMaster discs to fit. These are like the flame cut discs. I've also got the rear one, which means you, when you're doing wheelies, you can balance on the rear brake without overheating the rear disc. These are designed to, to, to be able to cope with a lot of heat. So we've got the MotoMaster front and rear discs with the appropriate pads for each. We've got the MotoMaster rear aluminium sprocket with their gold on gold chain. I've gone for two different front sprockets. I've gone a, a, two, a standard size, which I think is the 16, and I've gone for a 15. So I, I'm not sure. I may drop a tooth on the front with this build. I don't know yet. I'll probably try it around the block with the 16. If I think it needs more excitement, I'll go to a 15. But I think with the full Rottweiler, the full Arrow, the Power Commander, it should be pushing. And what I'm expecting is sort of 10 brake horsepower up throughout the entire rev range, really. That's what I've been said is achievable. So getting the crank 75 horsepower at the back wheel Ooh, so she may not need to go to a 15. It may be quite lively, <laughs> even with the 16. But that's the new bits. That's what's going into the box of bits to fit when we get to this stage. So that's the bits and bobs which are going to be going on the bike. Now let's get on with the detail of this video. Let's start stripping the airbox. I actually watched yesterday Rottweiler Performance have their own YouTube channel and they've got a video on how to fit the Rottweiler kit. So I watched that yesterday. So now let's see if I can put those instructions into practice. It's not hard, it's fairly straightforward, but let's have a look and see where the pitfalls could be, where it's a little bit tricky, or if it's just all plain sailing. Let's find out. Let's break out the tools. Cobra Kai, hit! So there she is, ready to begin. And as you may have noticed, I've also got myself a new garage floor mat. All my mats were looking a bit grubby, so I also treated myself to a MotoMaster floor mat for some proper garage bling. But one thing I forgot to do last time is the LED lights. We're still in the red Ducati colour. We've got to switch them to KTM orange. Uh, is that the orange? Oh, that's not very good, is it? That's not very orange. 
Green? No, that's not any good either. Blue? No, that's rubbish as well. Oh, let's just stick with red. Let's just stick with red. So the plan will be, get this airbox out, all of this whole unit will go. As I mentioned last time, is that's, that's the inlet into the airbox. That's the air, all your air for the engine's got to get through this tiny little hole here. With the Rotti kit, you've got all of this area is your air into the engine. So you can see how much difference it makes to the amount of air you can get into the engine with that Rotti kit. This is so restrictive standard and these bikes really benefit from getting a bit more air in, hence a little bit more fuel in, hence more power at the back wheel. <laughs> Can't wait! Away she goes. Repeat on the other side. Take this plastic piece off. Just check in with Chris at Rottweiler what to do with the hoses at the back. So I've done I've done the regulator. So it's a really good tutorial on how to strip the bike down and fit the Rottweiler kit on the uh, Rottweiler website. Let's continue. Thanks, Chris. Got to remove the uh, ECU. Undo these connectors so you can the airbox can move back as you take it off. So uh, how do we get these off? Push the middle one. Pull those down. There we go. I'm going to take the ECU right out. We also have to unplug the airbox temperature sensor here. So we will pop him out. You should just about be able to sneak that out. There you go. There's another bolt holding the airbox in here and on the other side. I think these last two to come out. I'm almost ready. The same the other side. And finally, to make it slip out a little bit easier, take these little uh, seat mounting clips out as well. The only thing holding the airbox in now is the Jubilee around the throttle body. So it's got to get that sucker out. Should now, in theory, lift out. Once you broke the seal. Oh, you bugger. Come on, you sod. Oh, you little bugger. Aha! Got it. Just, just breaking that seal onto the throttle body. Now we should be able to lift it off. Just didn't do that wire. Uh, I've also got the crankcase breather attached still I think. Because I'm fitting this, the SAS delete kit, I don't need a lot of this tubing. A lot of this tubing everything's going to be going so I'm going to start cutting out. No, I'm not cutting but I'm removing the tubing. Don't cut the tubing jobs. What I've got to try and remove is these tubes which feed into this little piece. The top one, I think it says it the bottom one. Yeah, the bottom one is what's going into the airbox. So we need to snip him Oh, no, it's the top one. <laughs> it's in the top one as well now. I think the whole lot will be going anyway. The second tube goes into this, which will also be coming out as well. We've got a nice little blank to go on that. We will cover the SAS removal as part of this video. So we'll do the, the Rotti airbox and this because all those pipes and tubes are related. So it makes an idea to do both at the same time. Come on, Mr. Tube. So need to pull the tube out. That's it. Airbox gone. That is it. That is the whole airbox which will be removed as part of this kit. So that's what we're left with. You can see the throttle body opening here. Got all this space. Also, this Rotti kit. Obviously, the the Rotti airbox sits here. It frees up all of this space here where you don't have anything. And and what while they actually sell a bag which goes in here, so you can utilise that space for your tool kit your sandwiches, whatever. So you gain this whole area here for storage. So that's the airbox off. This is the kit we've now got assemble. Let's put it together. Okay, so that's the kit. That's the base plate. That is the uh, Venturi inlet, if you like. That's the hose which connects everything to the throttle bodies. And then these pieces is the bracket. Remember, I removed the seat brackets. That's the replacement ones that come with the kit. But there's a couple of things you need to remove from the standard airbox. One of them is the air temperature sensor, which is in the back of the airbox. So you need to relocate that. And also the pipe 
which the crankcase breather, basically, I think this is. Uh, the breather from inside the airbox, which goes back into and joins all the other breather systems. So you still need to retain that, even if you're fitting the SAS Delete kit. Okay, so that is the base plate all assembled. Let's go and fit it to the bike for the next stage. Woohoo! Cobra Kai! Before you fit that, reconnect the air temperature sensor, because you'll find that fiddly once it's on. You also have to reconnect the crankcase breather on here, and then slowly try and feed the inlet over the throttle body. Hello. That went on easy, didn't it? Once you've got things sort of in position, you have to then fit the seat mounting brackets. And this is why it says in the instructions, you know, leave these loose at this stage until you've got everything in place where you want it to be. Don't, don't tighten anything. So bolt these on and then wiggle and get things seated perfectly. The last job is just to get the front mounting bolts on here. Now everything's nice and low in the bike and then nip everything up. Then we're done. Just got to put the filter on then. Oh, you've just got to put the filter on. Ah! Idiot. Bingo. Once everything's done, snip up these ones. So there we go, it's all completely bolted in now. Obviously the filter has to go on here, but I said about the storage space. I mean, look at all this storage space you've, you've gained. I mean, that is like a full tank bag, full tank pack or tail pack worth of space. And what while they do make a bag that sits in here. So I'm really gonna have to get one of those because that is an incredible amount of space which has been freed up. And when you have to do the valve check on this bike, which is every 6,000 miles, the cylinder head is right here, so to actually service it, do the valve inspection, it's going to be a damn sight easier with the Rottweiler kit on, because everything is accessible just by removing the seat. As I mentioned, you do have to oil the foam, and I've got this uh, filter oil, no toil. This is what Rottweiler actually recommend um, to oil their filters, so you've got to oil it. I'm not going to oil it yet, because I've got to fit all the power commander, I've got to fit all of the air recirculation system, and it gets sticky every time I go near it. So I'm gonna fit the, fit the air filter just to cover so I don't get any dust going in the inlet and carry on with what I've got to bolt on. To fit the filter, it's very easy. You need to get this clip underneath this side here. So I think that's under there. And then use the uh, D-clips. One clip. There we go, two clip. Absolutely solid. Okay, so that is the air box fitted. Well happy with that, beautiful. But now we may as well fit the SAS Delete kit as well. And then we can finish with all the tubing, all the Wattweiler gear, and then move on to the Power Commander. Woohoo, we're done. You don't get any instructions with the Rottweiler kit. You have to go onto their website and download them. There's a detailed set of instructions on the website and you really do need the instructions because there's not actually much in this kit. This kit is more about what you can take off the bike more than what you're putting on it. So the idea of this kit is we can remove this catch tank, we can remove these this pipe work, we can also move the pipe work off the little, this is the actual valve over here, that can go as well. All these tubes can go. Streamline the whole bike, basically. First things first is to remove this cover and replace it with this sexy Rottweiler one. So we don't need any of this tubing. This is obviously some sort of breather system out of the side of the casing or crankcase, I'm not quite sure exactly, but it's obviously a breather, which is some air coming out. We're blanking this off. We are blanking this sucker off. So I think the idea of the SAS system is when you close the throttle, you've actually got air going into the exhaust to sort of burn off any remaining gases. 
So that's, I think, the idea of the SAS. That can give you some pops and bangs on overrun with this. Blanking this off should remove any pops and bangs, but uh, that's it, basically. And then that little kitty goes in its place. We don't want you anymore. Oh, that's hot. There she goes. A few zip ties to cut. Pull them out. Pop this. There it goes. Bye bye. We don't want you anymore. Basically, you've got to do that. Remove the wire piece. Join these two. Let's got rid of him and his wire. Look at this. All removed as part of that kit. It's a considerable amount of uh, garbage, for want of a better word. Well, there we go, guys. Thanks for watching that. That's all the Rotty kit installed. Air filter and uh, the SAS Delete kit. So I'm going to close this video now. We're going to be installing the power command the next time, and I'll show you how you adjust the maps. I've got a couple of different maps to load onto it. We compare the map tables, talk you through that. Also, we fit the dashboard assistant as well in the next episode. And then we've got all the tech, all the electrical stuff, and I can put on some of the bits, you know, start putting it back together a little bit. Other things I'm going to get done, I'm going to take the calipers off. I'm going to get the calipers coated, probably burnt bronze, and then the Brembo writing on it, get that done in red. My friend Adam, who powder coated the Ducati swinging arm, he's going to do that for me. They've, his shop has started doing Cerakote as well. So I may get the foot pegs, the, uh, like the, the rear sets, are not really rear sets, but the foot pegs Cerakote in a darker colour. I'm also going to go for some SM Pro wheels for this bike. One of the big things I don't like about the 690 is it's not got those anodized rims that the old one have, just like a satin black. We're going to get some colours in there with SM Pro. So uh, they don't do a kit for the 690, but they re can reuse the existing hubs and then put their rims and spokes on. I can get some custom laser etching done. There's a whole host, host of colours. If you remember my old 500 EXC project, I had the black and the uh, orange fade, and Greg had the same on his 300 TPI SM. So um, yeah, I might go for something a bit different on the color front. I'm thinking of the, the same fade, but I've done that, perhaps a Cerakoted color. So <laughs> new wheels going on. Um, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be absolutely incredible. I've got some more blingy bits coming to go on to show you next week from Tecmo. Techno, 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 techno. Leave your comments below. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you haven't seen episode one, well, you've watched episode two now, but go back. I'll put links to episode one at the top. Thanks for watching anyway, guys. Really appreciate it. I'm just so pleased I've got this to keep me entertained in the garage and bring you some content on. So this is going to be the ultimate 690 SMCR. Woohoo! I can't wait! Beautiful.